Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing and explaining on how to make a floor plan by using a scale ruler. This ruler is the tool to use when you want to either read a floor plan drawing or if you want to draw a floor plan yourself. In these days, I know that the digital world is incredible and there are so many programs for making drawings that are very useful and efficient. But you never know when the day comes when you might be asked to draw a floor plan by hand or let's say you want to draw a floor plan of your dream house. By having the knowledge on how to use a scale ruler, you could do that. By knowing how to use a scale ruler, you're not making yourself only limited using digital programs, but also has the ability to use it in more than just one way. The scale ruler is used frequently by architects and interior designers, as well as contractors and many more professionals. This video is for you who want to have the scale within your career, or for you who simply just wants to know how to use the scale ruler for personal use. In this video, I'll be showing you a scale ruler with a metric system, since that's the ruler that I have on hand. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All right, let's jump right into it. All right guys, so here we have the scale ruler. When you're using the metric system, you always measure in millimeter no matter what. You can see that one meter here is going to be a lot bigger when you're doing the drawing. Alright, so here are the tools that you need. This is millimeter paper. You definitely need something to draw on, so that's the first thing. Then of course you need a scale ruler, a pencil, an eraser, a compass, and a circle ruler, as well as pigment liners. These liners are used in the end stage when you're using tracing paper. These liners, they have different sizes to them, as you can see, and I will uh, tell you in just a minute what they are all for. A very important thing is to get the center of the paper before you start drawing. This is to make sure that the drawing gets right in the center of the page. You don't want it to be too much up in the corner, too low or too high. I just measured here each side to make sure that I get the center. There is exactly where we want it. I just wanted to show you an old drawing that I did. You can see the scale at the bottom, 1 to 50 and the north arrow so we know which direction north is. The problem as you can see here is that I had the drawing way too up on the top of the page and I really needed it to come down. So you see how important it is to get it in the center from the very beginning. Right, let's move over to the tracing paper. As you can see it is transparent. What you will do when you have your finished drawing, you will place it underneath the tracing paper. And the first thing you will use is a pencil. This is so you can erase any lines if needed. Then you go in with a pen. And as I showed you before, these come in different thickness. 0.7 down to 0.1 millimeter. 
So the 0.7 one you use for walls. The 0.5 you use for windows and doors. The 0.3 is for fixed furnishings such as kitchen cabinets. And lastly, 0.1 is for furniture that are movable, including luminaire symbols. All right, I want to show you the example of two different drawings. This is the finished one with the tracing paper. Here you will have the scale at the bottom and the north arrow with, on the top on the side there. If I were to place the tracing paper on top of the original drawing, they have to match exactly to the point. The tracing paper later will be uh, used in a copy machine and then it will be printed out on white paper. All right guys, so let's start drawing. What I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do three different kinds. I'm gonna do uh, one using one to 100, one one to 25, and one to 150. Just make sure when you do draw that you stay on the same scale. If you, let's say you're doing a room using one to 75, make sure that you don't flip it around too much. Make sure that you stay on the same side so you're not getting confused. So I will start using one to 100, and the measurement that I'm gonna do is 4,400 millimeter, and the other side of the wall is 3,200 millimeter. Make sure that the line is completely straight. All right, let's go over to 1 to 25. You're gonna notice that this drawing is gonna be a lot more bigger. And as you can see, I stay on the same scale the whole time. I'm not flipping it over at any point. I remember when I first started drawing with a scale ruler, it happened that sometimes I flipped it over to another scale and it got completely messed up. As I said, I'm at 3,200 millimeter for one. If I'm doing the one to 100, you see it's gonna be a lot smaller. I just wanted to show you that example. All right, the last scale I'm gonna do is one to a 50. I always mark out which scale that I'm doing underneath each drawing. That way I don't get confused. And if someone were to come back and read um, using a scale ruler, they know which scale to use. All right, now I'm gonna do a door, which is 900 millimeter. What I'm gonna do is first measure out 500 millimeter from the wall out and then I will start doing the door. Then I will go in using my circle ruler. But if you have a steady hand, you don't need either the ruler, the, the circle ruler or the compass. But I like to use it because I wanna have a straight line as possible and I know I'm not as steady on my hand. All right, so I'm doing the same thing, but now I flip over to the one to 25 process is just exactly the same, it's just a different scale. So for the bigger drawings, here I'm using the compass. And 
and then lastly 1 to 50. And here the drawing is small enough so I can use the circle ruler again. Make sure you erase the wall where the door is so you can see that it's actually a wall that you can enter through or a door that you can enter through maybe I should say. Alright guys, I wanted to show you one last thing. I'm gonna do a drawing using 1 to 25 and here I'm going to do um, both inner and outer walls including a door and a window. So the measurement for this room is exactly the same as last time, 4,400 times 3,200 millimeter. Here I like to erase the, um, the little points that I did just to make the drawing look more clean. And then I just fill in the lines where they got um, erased. All right, time to do the door. Make sure that you're on the same scale. Now it's time to do the window. What I first want to do is measure the center of that wall because I want to have the window right in the middle. I know the window is 1,200 millimeter, so I get 600 millimeter, so I know that I'm right in the middle in between. Once again, I erased the little spots just to make it clean. And there you have it. The inner outer walls, including the door and the window. And don't forget the scale. All right guys, this is all that I have for this video. I hope that you have the knowledge now on how to use the scale ruler, what tools you need, 
and each step to make the process easier. If you are a beginner to this, all I can say is have patience and don't be too hard on yourself. I remember in the beginning how I struggled, but I didn't give up. And the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. That's how it is with any skill, so keep drawing. If you have any questions, just write me below. I'll be glad to help you. I appreciate you all so much for watching, as always. I love you guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.